We have, ladies and gentlemen, a high class problem. You'll hear from our undergraduate deans, you'll hear from our graduate dean about not only all the initiatives they're engaged in, but at the core, just how good things are. There is almost no traditional measure you can put on this institution, measure of evaluation that academics put on it, that says we're not winning. Whether it's applications, rankings, reputational capital, uh, parent satisfaction, student satisfaction, student learning, every single criteria you attach to the institution Every single source of both inside and independent measures of what's going on at Babson says this is a pretty special place with some pretty special things that are going on. And the question that I framed for governance and advisory boards and all of you here in this room is how good do you want to be? It's really an open and legitimate question. And once you've articulated a notion of how good you want to be, how fast do you want to get there? And with explicit recognition of the fact that the environment for higher education is changing at a rate which has been unthinkable in the past. Unthinkable in the past. And as an institution, the reason I frame this question of how good you want to be is because we really do have this marvelous choice. We can sit back and actually maintain the illusion that we can actually harvest our gains and celebrate. Right? So someone was kidding me. They said, so you had a meeting to announce that you successfully resolved a campaign and you used it as an opportunity to announce that you were raising 15 to 20 million dollars more. And I said, yeah, well, do you think I have two or three years to actually sit around and dream about what we might do in a campaign in the year 2015? Right? Do you think the world is going to support us in the middle of all these activities if we actually don't ask? Same question about the institution as a whole. We can actually celebrate all of these gains and sit back and enjoy it and uh, fall at an accelerated rate. Or we can go forward and continue to improve. This is an institution, and I'll focus specifically on the dynamics of the undergraduate market here. This is an institution where if you look at the demography of our students, the quality of our students, the structure of the applicant pool, we are knocking on the door of elite higher education. Knocking on the door. There are some of you who have 35 and 45 year histories with this institution who have got to acknowledge when you think about that as a fact that that is a most, about the most absurd proposition thinkable in the world. That the school you graduated from 45 years ago is now knocking on the door of elite higher education. There are actually some people here who think we're already there. And the issue becomes one of what are the kinds of things we need to face as we go forward. And a lot of my comments to you and a lot of the conversations we're trying to engender today and this weekend and over the coming months will revolve around the kinds of things I think we need to face as we go forward. Because we have this marvelous fantasy about elite higher education that says they have this marvelous difference that actually makes them uh, able to ignore the realities that we have to deal with, which is they're all wealthy. And so wealth provides slack resources that allow people to ignore current reality. Middlebury College. Middlebury College, in order to be able to cope with some aspects of the environment in which they are, where they have increasing pressure from parents around the economics of higher education, announced last year that they would cap tuition increases at 1% above the rate of inflation. Oh yes, and they also said they would expand revenue generating enterprises. They not only bought a collection of language institutions, but they've created a for-profit subsidiary in the business of delivering online language instruction. By the way, Middlebury is known for some of the best place-based, residentially-based language instruction in the world. Now they're in a for-profit business. Now, would that have been thinkable two, three, four, five years ago? Absolutely not. 
So not only for-profit, but partnered with a for-profit company that is leading the venture.